humble individual. لَكَ ذَلِكَ You've been given this kingdom. وَمِثْلَهُ And multiply it. وَمِثْلَهُ And multiply it. وَمِثْلَهُ And multiply it. وَمِثْلَهُ Multiply it. Five times. And on the fifth one, the servant shall volunteer. He shall say, رَضِيت That's enough. It's enough. Allah shall say to him, لَكَ كُلُّ ذَلِكْ وَعَشْرُ أَمْثَالِكْ all of that is given to you and ten times its amount. Fifty kingdoms of that which a king possessed in the worldly life. So Musa hearing this, obviously he had asked about minimum wage. Musa knows he is what? Prophet. And not just a prophet, he's also a messenger. And he's not just also a messenger, he's one of Ulul Azmi, the five main prophets who gave a covenant to Allah. Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So he says, he knows he's not getting minimum wage. So he says, فَمَا بَالُ أَعْلَاهَا So what, are the high, what do I get? Right? What is the reward of the people who are at the highest levels? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, do not ask. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ أَرَدْتْ They are those whom I have specifically chosen. غَرَسْتُ كَرَامَتَهُمْ بِيَدَيْ I have planted with my own hand the honor that they shall receive. فَلَمْ تَرَى عَيْنْ No eye has seen it. وَلَمْ تَسْمَعْ أُذُنْ No ear has heard of it. وَلَمْ يَخْطُرْ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِ بَشَرْ And no human being in his heart or in his desires or in his imagination could ever comprehend or imagine it. Don't ask. It can't be described to you. It's something that you have to actually physically enter into its domain and observe it. So therefore we understand that we cannot rationalize what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has remained and kept with Him from the matters of ghayb. Rewards for women in paradise. We're just scratching the surface here, right? They gave me the timer and it's like 20 minutes left. It's not really fair. Rewards for women in paradise is an important topic. I recently received an email from a sister. I don't know where she's from, which city, which area. She says she's a new convert to Islam, maybe six years into our religion, alhamdulillah. She's a feminist. And she says, I'm having difficulty. I can't understand how Allah can make me of use for a pleasure for a man. And I said, I, asked, I didn't understand the question at first. And I replied, I don't really understand what is the point you're trying to make. She said, in paradise... <coughs> I do, what if I don't want to be married in paradise? Can I choose not to have a husband? What is the reward that is only, solely for me? What if I don't want to look pretty for someone? In Jannah. Remember the two guidelines that we introduced? It's our concept of the worldly life when we begin to measure the hereafter with it, we lose sight. We can't comprehend its reality. The problem <coughs> with our sister, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward her and keep her steadfast upon the faith, is that she measured the akhirah with the tools that were given to her in the dunya. In the akhirah it is different. It is completely different. What is the first reason for this? You will not have any jealousy, neither the men nor the women. You won't look to someone else, because think of it. A person came to the Prophet ﷺ, and the hadith is an authentic hadith in the books of Imam Ahmad. A sahabi came and was weeping to the Prophet. And the Prophet ﷺ said, why are you crying? And he said to him, Ya Rasulullah, when I am with you, my heart is at rest. I'm content just to sit in front of you, just to see you. You don't have to talk to me, you don't have to do anything, I just want to be in your presence, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when I depart and go home and I'm with my family, I begin to miss you, 
صلى الله عليه وسلم فأفزع so I become fearful and distressed so I run over to sit with you again and then he says I remembered that there's going to come a time when you will die وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ Muhammad's only a messenger the human being and that I will die and there will come a point where you will be in Jannah and I will be in Jannah but you will be with the prophets and I will be with those who are lower levels in Jannah so I thought to myself this moment of pleasure that I have in the dunya I will not experience it in the Jannah immediately Jibreel descended with wahy to the Prophet sallallahu verses in Surah An-Nisa those who love Allah and the Prophet they shall be ma'an nabiyyin wa siddiqin wa shuhada wa salihin wa hasuna ulaika rafiqa and surely this is the best companionship those who sincerely love Allah <coughs> and his prophet, and work righteous deeds, they shall be with those who they love. The person had not yet understood, he thought of it in the worldly term. Muhammad wasallam is going to be at a far distance from me. He's in Al-Firdaus, the highest and middle level of the Jannah. The Prophet wasallam tells us that between each level in paradise, it is that of the earth to the, heaven of the, uh, to the, the, the first heaven of the sky doesn't mean the stratosphere, right? And we know that in, be- in between each of these levels, there's numerous and hundreds of levels. For example, the Prophet ﷺ says, the person who memorizes the Qur'an, and shall be said to him, اقرأ ورقا, recite and rise. And for every ayah that you recite, لكل آية تقرأها, every ayah you recite, you gain a level in Jannah. So there's numerous levels and in between each of these levels is that of the heavens and the earth. So this Sahabi thinking in this worldly term was was confused, was upset. But the Prophet ﷺ made it simple for him. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, There shall be from my ummah those whom the prophets (coughs) and messengers are envious of them because of their nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What are their attributes? Those who have excessive khutah to the masjid. They walk to the mosque. They're always going to enter the call of prayer in the mosque. Those who are in a state of wudu constantly. When they break their wudu, they renew it. The famous hadith of Bilal, narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari. What does he mention? The Prophet ﷺ says, Bilal, I heard in my dream... And we know that the Prophet's dreams are prophetic statements, right? Wahi is received by Prophets in one of three modes. Directly from Allah, the example of Musa. Or in a dream, like the examples of Ibrahim. Most of the wahi that was given to Ibrahim was in a dream. He comes to his son and he says to him, Ya Bunayya inni ara fil manam anni azbahuk. My son, I see in my dream that I am to slaughter you, to Ismail. That was the mode of wahi given to Abraham. Muhammad ﷺ was also given the wahi through Jibreel and all of the other modes of wahi. Hadith Qudsi, how do we, do we know what a hadith Qudsi is? It's when the Prophet ﷺ narrates directly from Allah and it's not a verse from the Qur'an. The hadith Qudsi are inspirations given to the Prophet ﷺ in the dream, right? That are not counted from the Qur'an. So the Prophet ﷺ expresses this and explains to us this condition. That Bilal, he says, I heard your foot patterns, your footsteps in the Jannah. What is it that you're doing, O Bilal? He said simply, whenever I break my wudu, whether it's day or night, I'll get up and I'll make wudu and I'll pray two rakah. And that is from the things that the Prophets and the Messengers become envious of the person who fulfills these deeds. Because it brings them nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We still didn't get into the specifics of women in Jannah. This is the intro. I have 15 minutes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding the people of paradise, (coughs) 
وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلْ Those who enter paradise, we extract from their chests, from their hearts, from their emotions, from their physical and psychological and social thought patterns, we extract from them غِلْ غِلْ is a word that you can't really translate it into any language. The Arabic language is powerful. And you will never appreciate the Arabic language until you actually learn it and study it. Listen to the poetic power of the Arabic language. And that's why they were those greatest poets of Arabic literature to have ever lived, who read a single verse and they submit. One of the greatest shu'ara, he was so powerful in his poetry that they would hang his poems on the walls of the Kaaba as an honor to him. One of the Sahaba saw that he had a poem, this man had a poem on the wall, and he wrote,